little over two months ago, we collected some graft wood in our studio gardens as we were pruning some of our trees. And today we're in a pecan grove in Fort Gibson over in the eastern part of Oklahoma. And with us is Mr. Basil Myers. And Basil, you've just recently retired from the extension right. service. January. And right. how many years did you have in? 29. 29 years. And Basil mm -hmm. is known in these parts of eastern Oklahoma as a grafting expert because for 15 years there have been grafting demonstrations in this field that we're standing in. And so we've got some great demonstrations to show you as well as some progression of the grafts. But Basil, first of all, when is the best time for us to come in and graft our pecan trees? As soon as the uh, bark starts to slip, but it is generally uh, late April and of course all of May and June. But uh, you can start uh, any time in late April. Okay. And when we talk about bark slipping, how easy it peels away? Yes. Okay. The bark from the wood. Okay. And we'll be able to show that as we do yes. the demonstration. Um, I guess another question I'd ask you before we start is, why would we want to graft a pecan tree that was this tall after we cut it down? That probably concerned a few people. Steve, it's the only way to really uh, know what you're going to get when the tree grows up. This is a seedling tree, and uh, it may grow up to have uh, pecans uh, extremely small or extremely big. You just don't know. So in order to get it into a known variety, mm -hmm. improved variety, we have to graft it, either bark graft, uh, uh, four flap, or some other Okay. Method. And we're going to show them how to do a bark graft today. And what? Tell us about the scion and the stock, and and get us started okay, on that. This then. this is a scion. Uh, some people cut these uh, a foot long so that you can uh, cut either two or three of them. But this is a scion that was cut uh, probably in February, and it has uh, either two or three buds up at this end. We will cut this end off and mm -hmm. uh, place it here. Okay. And and go through it from there. And what variety is this that we're putting this on? This particular one is Pawnee, and, uh, but he has uh, uh, Mohawk and Merrimack and uh, uh, some of the older varieties okay. here too. Okay. Well, Basil, why don't we go ahead and start uh, doing the process then? We want to uh, shave this down to about uh, uh, something like three inches, two and a half to three inches, and get it as smooth as we can. By the way, there's a little piece of equipment that does this for you, but if you've got a sharp knife, you can do it. We bevel this edge just a little bit, take just a little bit off of the back side of it, bevel the other side, and be extremely careful that we don't touch our hands to that uh, wood. Then we put this up here, something like an eighth of an inch uh, below the uh, uh, where it's showing there. Then make our mark about half, two thirds of the way down. Then this is where the bark slipping comes into effect. We have to have that wood come out away from that wood, and it did. Mm -hmm. Then we take a little hammer, and we try to work as fast as possible. So we're not letting that dry out that's there. That's right. And when you made that cut around the edge, what was the purpose of that, Basil, around the edge of the sign wood? Well, we want to uh, uh, increase the contact. contact of the cambium layer, which is about the thickness of a knife blade. We leave about a, an eighth to a quarter of an inch there. Uh -huh. And that's the green area that we can see around the edge? Yes, and that, that, that is the area that grows uh, on this stock to this, mm -hmm. so it will match. Then we cut this off like this. Mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time. I can't see around the corner. And I noticed you've got the ice chest there. That's to keep your sign wood in so it doesn't dry out. And, yes. and, and if it dries out or we leave it out too long with contact in the air, it won't take. The success will be pretty low, won't it? Let me get that right. Uh, that, that wouldn't grow. Can't see around. That's right. Yeah, it looks like you've got it going in there now. So it's real important to get it matched up with the, the be, stock wood. Then, yes. to, then we put a an 18 gauge, three quarter inch nail at the top here. Uh huh. That helps get the uh, contact again between those cambium layers. Yes. Hold it snug. And then what are you gonna? 
One more. Nail. One, oh, and that, put two nails in. Yes. And then the next step then would be to uh, wrap that with foil. Aluminum foil. And they say uh, the uh, right side out, this uh, holds in the, uh, or keeps the uh, sunlight, uh, sunlight out, uh, the heat, and keeps the... Uh, so the shiny side is going out to help reflect the thing. Reflect the heat. Keep it from and, drying out. Yeah. And then the next thing we would do is put a plastic bag over to kind of help keep yes. it from drying as well too. Uh, yes, uh, freezer bags work and we want to be real careful that we don't uh, injure the uh, little buds that are right. on there. And Basil, how long will it be before this sign starts to take, you think? How long? About, about can, three weeks. Uh, the buds will start? Uh, yes, and uh, on a, uh, uh, if this had been taken from a two-year-old uh, graph would, uh, well, it would probably take a little longer. It takes mm -hmm. longer for that. Right. Uh, then we put uh, either masking tape or string. Mm -hmm. Just for uh, a little better protection. Well, it keeps this uh, baggy or, or mm -hmm. uh, wrapper on there. Right. Now, Basil, there's also some things about grafting tape on the edge to keep it from drying, too. Some, some people just use this and, and want to emphasize that whatever works for you is, is right. what uh, some people just do that. Others do this. Paint this is orange shellac, and you take uh, take this and paint everything on right. the outside. And you know, I saw a study recently from West Virginia that says grafting tape, masking, electrical tape, all those things work about equally too. It, it does, uh, but whatever works you know, best for works that best person. For you. I'd leave this on there uh, till September, something like that. Take it all off. If ants become a problem, well, you can take that off a little uh -huh. earlier. Now, Basil, we've got some great uh, examples of stages here. We've got a, one over here that's just a year old that shows how it starts to grow together. We've also got some that are five and six year old and one that's 13 years old that uh, shows how this will grow into one main, right. main trunk. You've also uh, got to tell us about how to keep... Uh, Crows. And right. other, uh, some people uh, go to the trouble of nailing this to there and uh, and tie that to there loosely. Right, and then it's real important to leave yep. these branches to help feed it and, and give nutrients to the tree as well. Yes, and then uh, as this begins to grow, you can uh, uh, control the uh, rate of growth by either leaving these on or taking them off. Okay. And after it matures, of course, you'd take them right. off because these are native. Well, this is just one example, the bark grafting. Of course, there's several other types. Four flap graft is another common one on pecans as well. And I think to save a little time, we're, we're just going to demonstrate this one. But we want to tell you, if you are interested in grafting pecans, uh, there's a lot of good fact sheets that you can get at your county extension service just by going in and asking for uh, some of the fact sheets on grafting that explain all the different methods. And Basil, we uh, appreciate you meeting with Very us good. and telling us how to do this. And Hopefully this will be a success story that we can show later on too. I doubt if that would grow. I didn't get a good, uh, good enough contact <laughs> over there, but that's the principle of it anyway. Right. Thanks again, Basil. Very good. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.